Hi, Fee. How are you? I'm doing good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm very well, thanks. Um, so I was just wondering if you wanted to start off by giving a little bit of an introduction about yourself and your work. Yeah, um, so my name is Shay Miles um, and I'm a recent graduate from Grace School of Art. Um, I just graduated from Contemporary Art Practice um, and I'm originally from Nairn in the Highlands. Great. Um, so yeah, I just want to say like, well done on your degree show. I really loved your space. Um, I thought it was incredible. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how you made that, but like, <laughs> well done. Um, so uh, yeah, I was just kind of wondering because in your degree show, you had like a lot of different components, like a lot of different um, mediums that you've worked in. Like there was uh, film and performance and drawing and photography and then the whole thing was kind of in this amazing installation so was there like one um piece of work that kind of set that all off or I feel like with the virtual degree show in general like everything was just kind of like altered in a way that I never expected to have to like present my work in the first place so I found it really difficult to actually kind of visualize what I wanted to my show to look like um, and I can tell you right now that my actual show would not have looked anything like that. Obviously, like the space, the environment was just like completely, um, I wanted it to be quite something that I couldn't actually do in real life. Um, like that warehouse space, if you were to be a human walking around that, like it's huge, it's a massive space. So in terms of like the artwork that kind of was the catalyst for it, like I don't, there's not really an answer for that because I just kind of worked, with, I chose the space that I wanted and then I worked with that and just kind of, um, originally it was just gonna be the images that are at the back. Um, that was kind of all that it was gonna be. And then I was like, oh God, this space is so huge. Like I need to kind of push it forward. Um, and then, uh, yeah. So that was kind of, that's kind of where I started was with those images um, that are seen at the back of the room. I also really liked the, the three sort of was it baby oil bottles at like the front and um, just before you go in I thought that was really interesting it's like almost kind of preparing you before you walk into like the next bit of it yeah well I kind of was um unsure of how much attention the big bottle would get like because obviously it's kind of situated amongst all of these um images that I would hope would be interesting to look at so I was kind of like I want to kind of have like almost like a trigger so you see that as the little ones as you walk in and then hopefully it kind of gains more significance because there is this like ridiculously giant one in the middle. Yeah definitely it kind of helps you like read it when you go into like the second space. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I was also wondering um you said that like ritual is a big theme of your work so does that kind of come into like your own practice when you're making work? definitely um I'm kind of just really interested in the way that we have rituals without really like noticing um and like also the word ritual is quite a almost like a religious or spiritual kind of um it's got co those kind of connotations when and I'm really interested in looking at kind of the flip side of that and how they are just kind of like in your daily life so um whether that's like the way that we just sit down and eat three times a day or the fact that maybe some people don't so yeah it's kind of just more kind of like a, on a subconscious level that I like to look at like rituals. Sure yeah yeah that makes a lot of sense um so what are kind of like your main inspirations I know you talk about like the internet um and the sort of like fetish culture on that being yeah. a big part of it but is there sort of any like particular sources that you like go to to find inspiration? Or? Mainly oh god I sound like the of <laughs> my own life the jump from my work in third year to the work that I made um in fourth year and for the degree show was kind of like why am I making work about myself I, I want it to be accessible and kind of like relatable so even though I'm taking inspiration from my own kind of like in the intimate parts of my life I hope that it kind of is reflected in other people and they can kind of see that even if it's something that they you know maybe feel uncomfortable like talking about sex or talking about like their own kind of sex life or the way the part that that plays in their life like I try to make it kind of like fun and like silly and so that it is kind of a bit more accessible 
um I'm not sure if that answered your question actually no no definitely like and I think that really comes across as well it feels like you're really kind of like celebrating uh the idea of like fetish and the sort of food and sex it's quite like joyful and the, all the sort of mess that you see in that it's really you've done it in such like a beautiful way um <laughs> no I was I thought it was incredible oh. um so what is it like kind of using yourself as a subject because that must be quite strange like making that transition to becoming like the subject of your own work yeah definitely so um it was kind of like my only option as everyone else like I've been in lockdown and I've been all alone <laughs> in my flat so I didn't really have a choice um usually I would kind of like maybe make work that I had a mat like I have a mask on or like it's like an isolated part of my body so you don't necessarily know it's me like it could be anyone so when I was like planning the portraits that I shot and also the video um that you saw in the space I was kind of like oh man do I really want it to be me because again like self-indulgent artist strikes <laughs> again kind of thing so I was like do I really want it to be me and then I because I really do find it kind of uncomfortable like if you go through my Instagram from like basically when I started it I think that I've had that one since 2017 and then it's only been since I've been in lockdown that I, my face is actually like reoccurring on the feed I used to try to like avoid that kind of thing but just kind of it's just the way that my work has evolved and I've just kind of I can, and now I look like totally like obsessed with myself <laughs> no not at all I mean I think I suppose when you're using yourself as well, it gives you like an element of like control over how it turns out. That's why I want, that's why I did end up being like, do you know what, let's just do it because if I look self-indulgent or if I look like, you know, I'm obsessed with my face, then I don't really care because <laughs> so is everyone these days. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. Yeah, I mean, I think like Instagram is obviously such a big part of like being an artist now Definitely. and that sort of self-promotion. Yeah. Yeah, so um, you talked a bit about like lockdown there and what it was like kind of making work during that. Do you think it had like a really big impact on your work? Do you think your sort of outcome would have been completely different if we hadn't had to clear out of Greece or? A hundred percent, like literally a hundred percent. The mo the majority of fourth year for me was li just like an absolute flop. Like apart from my diss, which I'm quite proud of my dissertation and like the research field the work in the end but like see after dissertation hand in I don't even know what I was doing like between like the end of January and lockdown I didn't do anything productive and then as soon as lockdown hit like I had the whole like crying in the bath like <laughs> wanting like to go home and see my family kind of thing and then all like I did that for maybe like a couple days a week or whatever and then afterwards I was like do you know what I need to like make the most of this because I'm never gonna have all of this freedom like I was on furlough from work and I was like alone in the house so I was like I've got to just push through and then that's when it all kind of just like exploded <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean it definitely kind of I think it gave a lot of people a real kick when it when it came down to it and so um, what was the sort of like main challenges you found working from home um I feel like potentially the kind of space like the limitations of the space that I was in so um I have moved I, sh I shot my first series in my old flat um and then at, like at the very start of lockdown I ended up moving out of that flat and into this one um so it was really it was fun to kind of like experiment with two different spaces but w in both cases I was like oh god I missed the studio like I also just kind of miss having somebody like I wish that I could have someone that I could be like can you take this picture of me please because the majority of the time it was me just like posing and then being like oh, and like <laughs> just like so angry like going to the camera and the shot was wrong and then so it was kind of just having that like the community that you've got at Grey's as well as like the space as well. Yeah I mean I think that's a really big thing like getting feedback on your work when you're making it because it gives you that perspective. Definitely yeah. So your film was kind of filmed when you were like in your flat that was all made at home? No so that one I actually shot um in February I think I oh. and I rented an Airbnb um right. in Stonehaven 
and it was like incredible the space was just crazy so that was that was shot previously and then I edited and released it in during lockdown when I had the time right okay yeah because it does feel really like intimate it kind of feels like your own space and like your own home yeah well that's that's good I never actually really thought much about whether that looked like it was sort of my well I guess that's a good thing though that if it looked like that oh definitely definitely (laughs) yeah because I suppose that's maybe what you want to get across (laughs) So what was your kind of experience yeah, with like sure. the the virtual degree show? Like how did you find making it? With the virtual degree show, it was definitely something that I was dreading because um it was just really daunting. Like the idea of having to kind of transfer my practice, which I really I really wanted to be sort of like something that's really tangible and um like that kind of revolved around audience interaction to just like you know some pictures and videos on a screen like it was very it was difficult definitely and it took me a long time to be like excited about it um to be honest but the result is like incredible like the way that the space and the uh website has actually been created is like better than i could ever have imagined and it was really tricky because we were restricted in terms of like the amount of videos you could have in a, in a space and things like that and also kind of like figuring out lighting and that was the main thing I struggled with was lighting I was like it was just really there was a lot of different elements going on um, and obviously we were working to a deadline as well which made it even more difficult but I just think that the overall experience was a lot better than I thought and I had like constant support if I needed it um, from the staff at Grey's and then also from Design and Code and Look Again. So yeah, it was overall, it was great. But looking back, I was like, that was more stressful than actually making the work. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, because your space, it's something that you can't really imagine they would actually be able to pull off in Grey's. Like it probably wouldn't have <laughs> fit. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. That's kind of when I kind of came around to it and was like, right, you're gonna do this and stop being a baby like uh I kind of set a goal to myself and was like I need to make it something that would be impossible like you know unless I had like 10 grand like or something you know what I mean like for that kind of size space and then also the size of the work as well and I was also wondering about the uh, the color palette in your your space like it was really kind of like coherent the whole way through did that just kind of like come out of of like a bit of trial and error or? Um, So with colour, I feel like it's definitely something that is really important to me in my like general life as well as with my artwork. So I'm kind of, I was definitely like, had an idea in my head of, you know, the kind of like pink toned lights was definitely something that I wanted to have. So when I kind of sketched up the idea for what I wanted my room to look like, like I kind of did it in a process where like I already knew like what I was wanting to achieve and then I just tried really hard to make it kind of come to life but yeah just in general my work colour is really important and I'm a bit of a snob when it comes to stuff like that because (laughs) I just like uh, for example with Instagram like if I upload a photo and the colours don't match I'll literally delete it and I'm sure people are like you're so weird like (laughs) just post what you want but um that's ingrained in me unfortunately (laughs) No, of course, because you want to like curate how people see your work. So having a sort of theme is really important. That's true. Are there any uh, like artists that have really sort of been influential and in kind of inspiring your work? Definitely. So um, Lindsay Dye is one of my favourite artists of all time. She is um, an artist and a sex worker. So she actually, um, she's based in New York, I think, or, well, she's from New York. Um, She basically started off um, sort of researching sex work when she was at um, school. And she then was like, what am I doing? Why I can't be researching something that I haven't like put myself in the position for. So she started camming and then people would ask her like, to do really weird like things for her on cam and then one day someone asked her if 
um, she would sit on things for them and she was like what kind of things do you want me to sit on and they were like oh well anything and then she kind of googled it and she they turned out to be like this whole fetish around like cake sitting so now her entire practice is she draws cakes like these beautiful drawings like cartoony drawings of cakes then she'll make the cake and then she'll like go to a strip club or a museum to do performance art or like the strip club to do like more, even more performance art that's in like a weird situation and she'll like just sit on this cake and sing into a microphone um it's literally like the most bizarre but beautiful but confusing thing ever and she's like my number one inspiration like the first day i found her i was like i have to i want to be this woman <laughs> Yeah, that's incredible. And I can totally see how it like plays into your work, like with the whole bringing performance into it and that sort of like completely exaggerated style. <laughs> yeah, I mean, her work sounds brilliant. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, sure. You definitely should. You definitely should. And then she's got some performances like on her Instagram, so you can actually watch her. And she like has told stories in interviews where she's like been hired for like this uh, 18 year old's like birthday party and she just like sat on a bed in front of all these 18 year olds and it was like she just gets hired for like these people that have weird fetishes and it's just incredible <laughs> that's brilliant <laughs> um so like going forward after degree show have you got anything coming up with your work like or a direction you want to take it in um well i am really hoping to do graduate in residence at Grays. We haven't really heard much about that yet just because you know everything is like on hold because of Covid and the school has been working so hard on the degree show I feel like that kind of will hopefully come soon so that would be my my dream um, for the next year is to continue my uh, practice um, through um, graduate and residence. Sure, yeah. And you kind of planning on like continuing to explore like the same themes or? Yeah, definitely. I kind of want to take it a step further because right now my work I feel is quite like it's playful, but like I, I, kind of, I kind of want it to be more sort of, I wanted to investigate the themes a bit further. So recently I've been thinking a lot about like, why am I making work about sex? Like, you know, it's, some people think that it's, like you sh I shouldn't be doing this and that it's kind of um crossing lines like for example a lot of people when I put things on Instagram they're like oh, what if your dad sees this or your brothers what must they think and I'm like they don't care they just know that like this is just like they they appreciate they understand what I'm doing and they understand why I'm doing it so I feel like I need to kind of I want to make it I was gonna say less accessible I mean what I mean is like a bit more like raw because I feel like it right now it's playful and fun and like maybe the message is kind of being lost so I kind of want to like address it head on and be like this is sex <laughs> <laughs> yeah I guess there is still a bit of like a taboo around it but you kind Definitely. of want to like break down yeah that's the whole that's like the whole point because we live in a world where like sex is everywhere like you can find porn in literally the click of like on Twitter and you don't even have to look very hard so why do we why do we shy away and think that it's disgusting and have so many opinions on it when it's literally everywhere and for everyone to see like why is it a problem I, w I want to kind of unpick that I think. No definitely I think it's such an important thing and obviously art is a really great way of exploring that. Yeah definitely. Oh well, is there anything else you'd like to add? For the end of this? Apart from the fact that I think it's really important that if anybody has any sort of experiences with stigma around sex and then also any any time that you felt sort of as if it was something that you shouldn't talk about or you can't talk about, um, I really think it's important to kind of open up the conversation with people around you or even just with yourself and think about why you felt like that and then like think of ways to address it like if you are struggling to do that then there's all there's so many different resources and that's actually something that 
I do want to look into more is kind of like sex education and sex therapy and actually kind of taking my research and applying it to like help people like I make art and I don't know how much that does help people so I would really like to kind of hear from people in terms of stories they have or issues that they've kind of or things they've overcome um and yeah no that's really exciting I think it's really a really exciting prospect that you can kind of like put your practice into like something else yeah definitely so I was I've been looking into like courses and stuff online just as a starter just to see um because like I find it really easy to talk to people about these things so um, even if it's like my parents like my brothers my friends family that kind of thing so I I feel like I really do want to kind of make that conversation even wider you know than just like my immediate people sure yeah well it's been great talking to you Shay and um, so much is there anything you'd like to plug any like websites or oh sure? um my website my whole portfolio can be found at shaymiles.com and my instagram is at shaymiles underscore and you can find a link in the bio to my virtual degree show space as well